Hey everyone, uh, welcome to part two of my Getting Started with Creo series. Uh, in part one, I went over uh, just the basics of using Creo, what the environment is like, and everything that you need to know to make your first part. In part two, I wanted to go over some of the more maybe advanced uh, tools in Creo, like references and different extrusion functions, uh, and hopefully that'll help you out. So what I have planned for today is to kind of showcase those tools as I'll be making a part similar to the one that you see here. Uh, so let's get into it. Start here, make a new part. Name it whatever. So we're back here again, a fresh part. Uh, first want to start out by making that pipe piece in the middle, uh, kind of imagine this part as sort of a bracket. So I'll just extrude out the circle here. Dimensions don't really matter for this. I'm just using this as a demonstration. Uh, click OK. If you haven't already checked out part one, of this series, uh, everything that I'm kind of going over quickly here, uh, I go in more detail on that in that video. And I'll link that up around here somewhere for you to get to that pretty easy. I'm just going to do a mid plane extrusion here so it comes out of both sides like that. Click OK. So that part's done. Uh, this is just a simple part. So the kind of the main thing I wanted to go over in this video was something I mentioned in part one uh, with extruding off of a plane back to another part and having it uh, interface with that surface. So I'll just go over an example here. So in that part, this one here, to make this these kind of mounting holes here, I made a plane that was offset from the center of this pipe piece, drew uh, this 2D section here, drew this on here like this, and then I extruded it into the pipe. Um, so I'll go over that process here. So to make the plane, just go here, click plane, and I know that I want it to be offset perpendicular to this one here, so I'll click on this one, and then it already kind of knows what I'm planning on doing, so it'll ask for a translation input. So I'll do 50, that's not quite enough. Let's see, 250, a little too much, 150. Okay, that looks pretty good for now. Click OK. I can maybe make another video showing how to use this tool, because you can make a lot of different kinds of planes. You can make planes at 45 um, through different points, um, different things like that. So I'll click OK. And now we have our plane here. So now I want to extrude those mounting holes back to this pipe. So I'll click Extrude. And I want to draw that on this plane. So I'll click this one, get into the sketch view here. Now I'm ready to draw. So just to make it quick and simple, I'll draw something like I had on the other part. Just had three circles. And then I just had some lines connecting them. Just make those tangent start at the top here. I'm just trying this as an example. This could be literally anything. Um, just kind of using this to demonstrate the process. Um, okay, so now you see I've got these red dots here. This is because there's intersecting lines. Um, there's not one closed loop. So I'll have to use delete segment here. But first, I actually want to make holes in there. So I'll draw another circle on the inside of each of these. 
Okay, so now you can see that when it's highlighted purple, that means it's a closed section and everything's good to go with that. But we still have these red dots here, so I'll go and delete the segments here that I don't want. Okay, oh, I missed that one there. Okay, now we're purple. That means we're ready to go. I'm, I don't really care too much about these dimensions. I'll click OK. So now it's extruding the other way. We want it to go back to this pipe piece, so we'll flip it around. But now, as you can see, basically no matter what dimension we put in here, uh, we're not going to be fitting on that piece like we want. We want it to be flush with the outside all the all along this outside surface here. Uh, but just using a standard extrude, we can't really do that. So that's where I need to go over here. Click the drop down menu and then use this function here, which is an extrude up to selected surface. Click on that. Now it wants us to select a surface to extrude to, and I want it to go to the other surface, so I'll click that one. And now as you can see, we're flush all the way around. It's not sticking through at all. Uh, so I use that quite a bit since I make a lot of parts like these with brackets that are clamping onto a pipe or whatever. Um, a pretty powerful feature to be able to use that. Sometimes you can get lucky with the extrude feature and just get it the perfect dimension and just based on how all your parts are coming together it might work uh, but this is a foolproof way to make that happen another quick thing I wanted to go over that I didn't go over in other videos is there's rounds and chamfers that you can use uh, to make uh, quick features um, to improve your parts so let's just say on the edges on the inside or ends of these pipes I want it to taper in a little bit for whatever reason uh, so I'll go here and I'll click chamfer and I'll click on this edge because that's where I want it to kind of taper in a little bit so now as you can see there it added a little chamfer in there you can change that dimension make it small or make it a lot bigger do that on the other side here. Um, I don't use chamfers a ton. The other feature that I use a lot more is rounds. Uh, so I'll click on a round here. And especially with 3D printing or uh, just manufacturing in general, anywhere that you've just got a sharp edge like that, that's a hot spot or it can create stress hot spots. Um, and that's where parts are more likely to break. Um, I guess an example uh, that I always like to use or I've heard used for describing this is on fruit snack bags. There's always just that little slit on one corner or if there isn't one, it's a lot harder to open up or tear open that fruit snack baggie. But if there's that little cut already in there, there's that sharp edge where stress can get concentrated and it makes it a lot easier to rip open. So with a lot of parts, when they're being designed, you don't want that to happen. So that's where we like to add rounds. So I'll go around here, add rounds to these edges. So I just went around and clicked on the edges that I want the rounds on. Um, you can see it kind of smooths that edges so there isn't that sharp uh, change. You can, just like the chamfer, I was going to say change it to whatever you want, um, but depending on the geometry, uh, you may be limited with how big of a round you can create. Um, and then obviously if you go super small, it's not going to make much of a difference. So we'll just go back to where I had it at 15 and it works just like that. The thing I wanted to mention that I forgot to mention earlier was references. Uh, references are exactly what they sound like. They allow you to use information from 
other features or parts to make that next feature. Uh, so for example, we have these holes here. Let's say that uh, we wanted to have holes in those same positions on this other side of the part here. So to do that, we can use references. So I'll just go to extrude here, click on this middle plane, and I'm just gonna make it so that the holes travel all the way through the part. Get into the sketch view here. So then once we're here, we can go up to references. And now is when we can select our references. So like I said, we wanna use these holes. So I'll go around and click on the edges of these holes here. Close out of that. And then we just have to draw in these circles here. Middle click to be done, click OK. And now since I want them traveling all the way through the part, I can use this feature here. And we want it to cut. OK, so now we have our holes in there. And I guess technically to make this part work, we want it to extrude all the way through. So what would be better is a mid-plane extrusion and then just make a dimension that'll have it go all the way through. Okay, so we've got our holes in here. And what the other thing that's nice about references is if I were to go back and I wanted to change the size of these holes on this side, once I did that, and change that, then regenerated the part, which it will do automatically. These holes on the other side that we referenced to those holes will be the same size. So that just about does it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to leave those down in the comments below and, and don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll keep making more videos like this. Thank you.